Today, we're gonna cut the stock hot end off our Creality printer, and we're gonna replace it with the Revo CR. The Revo CR is designed to be a direct swap for the Creality set of printers. And what makes it a direct swap is a couple things. First of all, we have the cold side of the hot end here, and it's flat on the back, and it's got the mounting pattern uh, that matches the original one, so we can thread the original screws through here right into the X carriage and direct swap it. The other thing is it's using exactly the same thermistor as the printer is stock. So that means we don't have to go into the firmware and change the thermistor. Uh, if your firmware is Clipper, that's kind of just a config file change and a reboot. Um, but if it's Marlin or something else, then it can result in you having to recompile the firmware to change that thermistor type. We don't have to worry about any of that. Um, another thing that kind of makes this a, a rapid swap, if you will, is they include some little pinch crimps. So you don't even have to solder and heat shrink the connections. You can just put the wires in push down on the little orange button here and it will splice those wires inside the housing. They also give you two extension cables that match up with the connectors they have here uh, and a piece of PTFE tubing. So here we have a Creality Ender 3 version 2 and we know that this is a 24 volt system so just make sure when you are purchasing your kit that you purchase the correct voltage for your, your printer. Um, so we have 24 volts and this kit happened to come with only one nozzle so we have the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Okay, so to install this, we gotta start disassembling the stock hot end. Um, from the back side, there are two screws at the top here, and those are holding on the fan housing, so we need to take those two screws out. So with those two screws loose, the shroud is now kind of flopping around here. I'm just gonna give us a little bit more clearance by removing this one zip tie and pull the braided sleeve back a little bit. Now with the fan shroud off, we're going to remove these two screws and be able to remove the rest of the hot end. However, before we do that, it might be better to try to remove this PTFE. So after removing the little retaining clip, if one exists on yours, you should be able to push down on the top collar and pull the PTFE out. Um, if for some reason it's not coming, you might wanna heat the hot end to 200 degrees or so, um, just because it is a fully lined hot end, so it goes right down to the tip, um, and that'll loosen things up. Uh, but if you're doing that, you should also have the fan shroud back on while it's being heated up to 200 degrees. Um, once everything is cool though, if you got this off at 200, great, let it cool down before doing anything else. Um, or you could unscrew the actual collar here, um, but you may damage the PTFE in the process. So in my case, this is not coming out no matter what I seem to try. So I'm going to fully remove these two screws and then unscrew the, um, the PTFE coupler here from the hot end. Okay, so I've got those two screws uh, fully removed and now I'm just unthreading this with any, there we go, with any luck. So the, you can see it's not really allowing me to press this down, which makes it very difficult. You can press with like a pair of pliers like that and kind of slide it off the end. There you go. So these extension cables would be useful if we needed to run an entire new run to the main board of the printer. Um, or if we're gonna use the quick splice connectors, we're not really gonna need those. We're actually gonna cut these tips off and then we're gonna splice the bare wires into these bare wires here that we're about to cut. Um, before we cut any of these though, I'm actually just gonna install this on here like that, um, just to get a sense for how long the wires are and make sure I don't shortchange myself. Um, so I'm gonna just snip these at the very tip. So the yellow ones here, thinner ones, those are the thermistor. These are the heater. Um, there's no polarity to these, so it doesn't matter negative, positive or anything. Um, so that makes that simple. And then using the original screws, I'm just gonna thread this back on here. So then I've got the hot end here with our, our wires. We can see how much wire we have to work with. And on the original hot end, I just wanna make sure that we're giving ourselves enough to get all the way over to the end here without tugging on these. So I'm gonna want them to be about that long. So I'm gonna cut these right here. I've given myself just enough that if I needed to reattach these to something else, I've got some slack to do that. So we're gonna start with the heater wires here, and I've got this moved all the way over to the end. Um, and the way that the wires go into the splice is they both have to go in the same direction. So they would be curling kind of upwards like that, and the splice would be here, right? Rather than them being end to end like a normal uh, soldered connection, right? 
Um, so, you know, giving myself, using this kind of grounding wire as a, as a basis for how long the wire should be, I wanna give myself enough that they can bend and go like that. And then I'll just trim this guy so he's the same length. Okay. Now, place them both in all the way to the bottom, like that. You'll notice that the stock wire had a much thicker sheath on it uh, and insulation than the, um, than the one attached to the hot end there. And then we just need standard pliers to squish down on that orange button. Hopefully you can see through the backside there, you can see both wires, they're all the way, all the way in. And then just use your pliers and you don't need to be Hercules or anything, you should just be able to press this and it should splice into the wires like that. Now there might be a little bit of ooze. There's kind of like a gel inside these. Um, you could just wipe away the excess on a piece of paper towel or something. Um, and then just repeat that, uh, that process with the second of the two heater wires. Let's make sure we're not tangling our wires in the process. And so these guys, I'll just repeat over and over. So to make working on this a little easier, I did pull the braided sheath here back through this other zip tie. Um, so now it's kind of time to, to pull it back forward. And we're gonna tuck all of this inside the braided sheath as much as possible, um, hoping that that gives us a little bit of extra kind of strain relief function there. I'm just gonna tuck all of these in here. And before I go and uh, you know start zip tying everything back together, I'm gonna turn the printer on and make sure that it's still sensing the temperature and that it heats up. Um, and then just make sure we don't kind of tangle any of these wires any more than they have to be. And this should kind of slide back on here. And there's two little clip pins that'll kind of hook it into the proper position. So I've kind of meticulously made sure that I'm not pinching any of the wires between the shroud and the back plate, um, and they're not blocking the PTFE um, tube inlet, that little coupler there. And so now I'm just going to screw through the back of the X carriage here to reattach the fan shroud. Okay, so I've uh, turned on the printer and we hear the fan running there. And I can see that the hot end and heat bed are both reading 24 degrees. So that's a good sign. Um, if your thermistor wasn't uh, properly connected or you know the splice didn't make good contact there, um, you would get a very strange reading. It might be like negative 10, it might be zero, whatever it is. Um, but the fact that it's the same as the heat bed tells me, or it's at least in the vicinity of the heat bed temperature, tells me that it's reading correctly. Um, and then let's just see if it warms up. So if I go prepare and say maybe preheat PLA, I just wanna see the hot end move above 24 degrees basically. And it's not. So as you can see, you always wanna check before you end up like buttoning everything up and, and getting it all done. Our hot end wasn't heating up and it should heat up quick. I mean, that's one of the claims to fame of the, the Revo. Um, right now you can see that the hot end is at 55 degrees. So I did get it to work. I ended up just re-squeezing these um, little splices uh, to make sure that it was making good contact. Um, the wires are all the way in, so I knew that wasn't the issue. Um, and if that failed, uh, because you only have one spare and I already crushed it, um, you'd probably have to revert back to, to soldering those, right? Um, but it's working now. If I go uh, to prepare and say preheat PLA, we'll see that our hot end is at 47 degrees, 49 degrees, 53 degrees, 57, you get the point. It's heating up rapidly um, and the heated bed, of course, is heating up too. Um, so we can cool, cool that back down. Okay, so now we can start moving the sheath over um, putting some zip ties on and getting this all kind of tidied up. Okay, so now we can reinsert the PTFE tube. There we go. And now it is a full metal hot end, so the PTFE tube is not gonna go as far down. Um, it's only gonna go in maybe half an inch to an inch. Um, so you could have trimmed the PTFE here to make it a little shorter, um, but leaving the extra length is really not gonna be a big problem. And then I'll just continue to zip tie this wire bundle to uh, to the PTFE. I you don't want to go crazy with the zip ties either. So you can see at the bottom here we've got the kind of cinch connectors. There wasn't really enough slack there um, to get them completely inside um, the nylon braided sleeve. 
uh, but the rest of them here are. And so tighten that down. And I'm just gonna add one more to like the middle here. And we're done. I mean, that, that doesn't get much simpler than that. Um, and I didn't require any special tools to do it either. Now, I did mention earlier on that if your printer has the ability to do a PID tune, that you should go through that process. This particular printer, the screen doesn't expose a PID tuning option. Um, so your options, if that's the case, uh, this is a Marlin based printer, um, we would use the command M303. Um, so that's the PID auto tune. And for M303, you're gonna provide it a few different parameters. One of them is S and then a temperature. So you'd say M303 space S210, let's say. So I'm gonna to try to PID tune to 210 degrees. Um, and how many cycles you wanna do. So there'll be C8, let's say. So it's gonna do eight cycles of that tune. And so after it's done the PID tuning, which all you'll see is the temperature go up and down, kind of bobbing above and below your set temperature of 210 in our example, um, you're gonna to wanna to save those settings. So it's gonna U them, which should save them, but just to be safe, you could uh, save the configuration on the screens menu or do an M500, which will save your settings. Now, once you've saved your settings, um, you could do an M503, which will read back all the printer settings, and one of those settings will be the PID tuning values. Um, and uh, you know, when you turn the printer off and turn it back on, you could do an M503 to read those again, just to make sure that it is properly saved. Um, you may not need to do PID tuning, um, but it's definitely recommended to. And even something as like a five or seven degree swing in temperatures can be visible uh, on your print. Um, and you know, larger temperature swings even change like the sheen of the material, especially with PLA or PETG. Um, but anyway, hopefully your screen exposes that setting, that option to save those, because then that PID tuning is th as easy as the rest of the install was. One other thing to check before you just hit print and start going, you're gonna wanna check your bed leveling again. Um, technically, you wanna check to make sure that your nozzle isn't ramming into the bed. Even though it is designed to be a direct swap, there could be a minor height variance between where this nozzle is right now and where the stock one was. Um, and so you don't wanna assume that anything is level. Take all the precautions, properly level your bed, um, and then you can start using it. Hopefully you found that useful, and now even you can make use of the new Revo hot ends on your Creality printer. Thanks for watching.